Dr. Galvin, they're bringing in Carla Redlin. Okay, easy, fellas. Easy, easy. You said she fell? I found her on the floor like this. There's no telling how long she'd been there. Well. Baby, baby, easy. Okay. Her vital signs seem to be all right. Judy, I want you to take her down to x-ray and have Dr. Thompson take a look at that bump on her head. Did you take the stairs to the elevator? The elevator? Well, did anybody see you? Of course. Well, did they ask you any questions? Only you, Sebastian, only you. Look, I'm trying to head off a crisis here. Do you understand that? Or do you care if a million people are wondering why you only had a two-hour honeymoon? Correction. No honeymoon. Well, you'd better start getting back in Kate's good graces. And I mean now. Oh, really? Well, how do you propose that I do that since I don't even know where she is? You're a very smart man, Sebastian. Maybe you know where she is. So, Peter, come on in. Have a seat. No, thanks. How about a drink? I got some, uh, no. scotch, vodka, bourbon. Nothing for me. Oh, sorry. I'm all out of Kool-Aid. So, uh, what was so urgent that we couldn't discuss it over the telephone? I want to know if you're going to leave Amber after she has the baby. What? Why would you ask me a question like that? Stacy thinks you might come back to her. Jean found you on the floor. Do you remember what happened? Did you feel dizzy? Did you feel dizzy, babe? Mm -hmm. well, everything is going to be all right. You just relax. Relax. Take it easy. Carla, does your head hurt? And my stomach. Yeah, I know. You bumped your head on something. Don't you remember that? You got yourself a little goose egg, lady. <laughs> well, she's got a mild concussion, but I don't think it's anything we have to worry about. Doctor, Mrs. Redland's x-rays are here, and I have the lab report. Okay, I'll be there right away, and, and tell admitting I want to keep her here in the birthing room. Birthing room? Mm-hmm. She's in labor. She is. Don't worry, Jean. It's just the first stage. You know, I think she would have come to on her own when it got bad enough. Okay, uh, so then what are we going to do now, Doc? Well, we don't have to do anything right away. There's plenty of time. Carla, Carla, do you remember when those pains started? After lunch sometime. Oh, honey. Baby, I'm so sorry that I left you. It's okay. I knew I should have stayed home. Dr. Galvin, is my baby all right? Oh, the baby's fine. You just took a spill and bumped your head. Try to remember what happened. I tried to call. Tripped. I don't know. I forget. That's okay. We've got a pretty good idea. Hey, uh, starting again. I know. Okay. You're going to be just fine. Just do your breathing, and I'll be yeah. back just as soon as I can to check on you. Um, no, I don't baby, leave. No, no, I'm not going to go anywhere, Carla. Just relax, baby. Take it easy. Practice your breathing. Come on. Come on. Well, Kate's got to come home sometime. When we find out she's there, you can, you can go over there and straighten out this mess. This mess? Don't you mean your mess? You see, you got us into this when you fired Andrea. She had to go. You can't have a wife and keep a mistress on the side. It wouldn't have bothered Andrea. 
We discussed it. You're a bolder man than I am. Yes, and far less meddlesome. Look, you hired me to manage this campaign. You don't want my advice? Fine. I'm fed up to here with, with working for lost causes. Lost cause? Is that what you think? I think you've been fighting me every step of the way. But do you think my campaign is a lost cause? No. I thought you were going to win from the very beginning. That's why I put everything I have and everything I am behind it. I've sweated blood for you, bub. And that's what teased me off. You're the candidate. And yet you seem to continually do things that, that seem deliberately designed to sabotage every bit of the progress we make. My affair with Andrea wasn't by design. It just happened. <laughs> You're not serious about quitting. No, I'm not. But I'll tell you this. You better start concerning yourself with what you're going to tell that bride of yours when she finally shows up. You and Kate could have been the winning ticket together. Now she's liable to do anything. She could go to the press. She could... Well, even if she doesn't go to the press, it could still leak out that she left her own wedding reception without you. Then, then the press would come to her. And that Gene Redlin, he's no fool either. He knew the minute Kate walked out of that lodge that something was up. And even if he can't guess what's going on, there's Stacy. She'll know probably any minute now. I can't imagine that Stacy would want to embarrass her mother. Embarrass? <laughs> Do you think she cares who she embarrasses? When she thinks her own mother's future happiness is at stake? You're the one that'll be embarrassed, boy. Not Kate. Kate could go over and start working for Wainwright. Well, I don't know what you want me to do. I can't find her. I don't know where she is. Well, you had better get to her before somebody else does. Or you're sunk. Sebastian? Sebastian, I was just on my way home and I wanted to stop by and tell you how much I appreciated... Liddy? What are you doing here? You saw Stacy? Yeah, saw her at the Chronicle today. I don't understand how she could have gotten that impression, Peter. I mean, she knows I'm marrying Amber. Marrying, yes, but only until the baby's born? No, I didn't say that. Well, I think you better talk to Stacy and get this thing straightened out because she thinks you might come back to her. She thinks I'm marrying Amber just to give the kid a name? Well, she didn't say that exactly, but I think that's what she believes. She says that you still love her. I do. Well, then you should explain to her. Tell it like it is, Gil. I did. I thought I did. I thought she understood what I meant. Oh, well, I'll tell you what she understands. She understands you're going to marry Amber just to save the baby. Right? And then after she delivers, the marriage is over. See, she, she sees this as a temporary setback. When it's all over, she's going to marry you. Yeah, but wanting to and actually doing it are, are two different things. But she hasn't made that little distinction. And I don't think that, well, I would bet that you haven't tried to make that too clear to her. Well, what do you want me to do? Tell her I don't love her? <sighs> That's crazy. She knows that I love her. And I probably won't be able to ever love anybody else. You can't have it both ways. What, do you want me to drop her? <sighs> it's not that easy, Peter. How does Stacy feel about this? Have you asked her about it? I don't want to lose her. Gail, don't leave her tied to a dream, man. Let, let her go. Let her go. She doesn't want to be free, Peter. She loves me every bit as much as I love her. Why, you don't think she could go love somebody else? Look, Peter, you've gotten yourself involved in something here that you really don't know anything about. Now, I really appreciate it because I know that you think you're doing the right thing. But just let me handle it, I've okay? seen how you handle things, Gil. I picked up the pieces, remember? But this is different with Stacy. Oh, yeah? What is this, love? Yes. <laughs> it, see, it doesn't matter how much she loves you or how much you love Stacy. If you marry Amber, you can't leave her on the side, on hold. What, you think she's gonna be happy being your mistress? Come on, get out of here. 
She deserves better than that. Yeah, she does. But you make it sound like I'm being totally selfish. Look around, Peter. What couples that you know are still happy or in love? The married ones? No. It's the ones that don't have to prove anything to each other. What is marriage these days anyway, huh? It's just a contract between two people. Half the time, it's a couple of people that don't even want to be with each other. And Amber and I are going to be a perfect example of that. Now, Stacy and I don't have to prove anything to each other. We know. We feel it. And we know that it's going to last forever. Oh, man. Well, am I glad I never listened to you? I thought you had everything. I envied you because you could have any girl in Kingsley, married or unmarried. But you know, I, I thought that was so unfair. But you know what's unfair? And not that you could pick or choose, and not that you could discard what you got tired of. It's that you rationalize everything to yourself. And in this case, to someone who's, who's so sincere and in love with you that they just might believe it. You want to play it comfortably? Keep, keep Stacy for you, no matter what it costs. Okay, go ahead. Fine. But I don't want to see her when this illusion wears off, because, you know, I'd like to remember her as someone with just a little bit of innocence and love and trust. Peter. What? How do I find the words? Thanks. <laughs> what about Peter? Good question. Well? Let me put it this way. Peter's doing fine. But I'm not very happy about his relationship with Vicki Lang. Well, take it from somebody who uh, was a young man once, that uh, he'll have many a heartache before he finds the right person and settles down. I don't think Peter would agree with you. In fact, I'm sure that he would say Vicky is the right woman for him. He feels that strongly about her? Yeah. Well, at least he thinks he does. But I don't really think he's in love. Well, love is a very fragile thing. Can I ask you a personal question? You can ask. I can't guarantee you an answer, but you can ask. <laughs> You think you'll ever fall in love again? Well, I, I... I don't know. Have you ever thought about it? Well, yes, sometimes. I've been thinking about it a lot the last couple of days. Oh? Well, I know my situation is different from yours. Uh, uh, being a divorced person, I face some problems that you don't. And I'm sure you're aware of the pressure that some put on divorced men and women to, well, remain faithful to their original spouses. No matter what. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah, I'm aware of the pressure. But is it from God? Or is it from man? Well, God hates divorce. What else does he say in scripture? Look at the facts. Kate divorced you before you knew the Lord. And when you became a believer, you tried to get back together with her. But she didn't want that. If... An unbeliever wishes to separate, let him do so. But the believing husband or wife isn't bound in such cases. Yeah, that's my understanding, too. Can I ask you a question? What? Now, I want you to be perfectly honest. I mean, as a friend. Of course I will. I'd like to know what you think of me. I mean, has your opinion of me changed since I haven't been able to work things out with Kate? But I would love to hear how you're going to handle this. Look, Amber, I never got involved with Andrea until after your mother started seeing Dave. What was I supposed to do? Sit around and twiddle my thumbs until she finally came to her senses? That could have been never. How was I to know that she was going to come to her senses? I thought you of all people would be realistic about this. Oh, I'm being very realistic. Where did you do it? Right here in the office? Oh, come on, Amber. Oh. As a matter of fact, this shouldn't surprise me. All of you men are useless. You can't get it through your heads that the world could care less about you and your precious ego. I am sick to death of your strutting and your whining and your vain ambitions. 
When you come right down to it, all you really had to offer are 23 lousy chromosomes. Or is it 22? What do you intend to do? Listen to me, both of you. I really don't care who wins. This uh, congressional seat, you or Wainwright. But I do care about my mother. And if this means that she's back to a choice between you and Dave Phillips, I'm willing to help you out. You say you don't know where she is. No, we don't. Well, as soon as I find out where she is, I'll call you. Boy, you better thank your lucky stars that she has a stake in this. Thank you. <laughs> what do I really think of you? Well, actually, Dave, I really don't know how to answer that. I certainly don't think any less of you. You did everything in your power to get back with Kate. Yeah, well, I guess it's just a matter of accepting scripture then. There's more. Yes? <sighs> Never mind, it's irrelevant. Oh, come on, Terry, go on. I want to hear. Well, it's just that... Uh... I can't really believe that Kate's left you. Terry, she just married another man. But sometimes people do things that contradict what they really feel. Are you saying she walked down the aisle reluctantly? I think that Kate is still in love with you. Oh, no. Maybe just a memory. It, well, before I found religion, as she put it. That's what drove her away from me, my inflexibility, my feelings about Amber's abortion. But she has to admire that about you. I mean... I bet that she, she has to admire a man who knows who he is and what he stands for. <laughs> yes, but she doesn't love me. I think she does. I'm sure that she does. Look, even if there was a difference in your values, there's still the feelings in her heart. Terry, she just married Lee Carruthers. I know. But I'm saying that deep down in her heart, beyond whatever conviction she has, there is a bond that can't be broken. It's a love that can't be consummated, but it can't be extinguished either. Mm. Well, what you're saying then, in your eyes, I'm still married. Well, yes. That's what I'm saying. I think I'll get dinner started now. Gil! What? What is this doing here? Oh, I bought that for you. I don't want a gun. I bought it when, uh, just before we broke up. I thought you might need it for protection. Get rid of it. Did Mother happen to call by any chance? No. Do you think she might miss you while she was having her honeymoon? I was just wondering. Peter came by. Peter Davidson? Yeah. He thinks I should go and talk to Stacy again. Set her straight. Let her know that we're not going to be able to see each other anymore. She thinks you're coming back to her? Well, if she does, it's my fault. Well, then stop it. It's your job to tell her the truth. It's going to break her heart, Amber. Oh, come on, Gil. Why do you think I haven't called her since I moved back in here? Because you're a coward. And I've had it up to here with wimps today, so why don't you just go set her straight? You know, you're enjoying this situation entirely too much. Why don't you come along and watch? Don't you want to see the crowning glory of all your manipulation?
Are you going to see Stacy? I'm going out to think. I can do that a lot better when you're not around. Wait up for me, darling. Family Referral Associates. Yes, I'd like to make an appointment, please, to talk to someone. Yeah, Phillips. Amber. About an abortion? Thank you. <laughs> 